Welcome to Assemble a Print Book Cover Part 2 in which we put the front cover together. First of all let's go up to the Windows menu and go down to Tools, click on Tools and so we can see the toolbox. You can move this around by clicking near the top or just on those uh, little dotted lines. You can move it wherever you want. If you click on the double arrowhead by the way it repositions the toolbox. You can have it dual columns but I'm going to leave it there at single columns and I'm going to click on what's called the rectangle frame tool but I usually call it the picture box so I can click and drag across the front cover. Yes this right hand rectangle is going to be the front cover and this is where I'm going to put it in an image. The X shows that it's a picture box but notice how it's not quite lined up on the spine near the middle. I do want to drag it all the way to the red line which is the bleed which is three millimeters beyond the edge of the cover. You do want that for the reasons of error when cutting so you don't end up with a thin white uh, piece of cardboard showing from beneath. But to actually fix the inner alignment. I'm going to click on the black arrow or the main selection tool and I'm going to grab that activation node near the middle. I'll just wave it around so you can see it. Then once it's over the edge of the front cover I'm going to let it go and it looks as though that particular line disappears because it's beautifully lined up now. Not like it was to begin with. And so we can import the image by going up to File, clicking on File, then going to Place or Control D. I'm going to select this image. It's a TIFF file which is good for printing. That's the tagged image file format. But more importantly it's at 300 pixels per inch. That's the resolution. And the colour mode is CMYK. And CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow and black. The K is for black because it's the key colour against which all the others are calibrated. OK the image doesn't fit. That's OK. We're going to fix that. But I do want to see it in a slightly better resolution. So I'm going to go to View and Display Performance and select High Quality Display. And it will just improve the look slightly. If you couldn't see it, don't worry. But it is a useful tool to actually know about. Right, to put this image in its correct place, I'm going over to the Toolbox and I'm going to click on the white arrow which is the Direct selection tool. It's going to allow me when I click on the image and you can see the brown activation nodes that come up. It's going to allow me to directly select that image and resize it. I'm now going to hold down shift on my keyboard while I drag one of the bottom corners. This is to keep it in proportion. That's a good trick to remember uh, holding down shift to keep images in proportion. Uh, it's still not quite right. Can you see the hand that's appeared that I'm just waving it around near the middle? And I can now grab the image and just move it so the surfer, or the lifeguard I should say, he's a little bit more centred. And that's not bad. I might just move it over this way a bit. And okay, I'm happy with that position there now. And now I'd like to put in the title. So I'm going to go to the toolbox, click on the type tool, click and drag a text box. I'm clicking and dragging all the way across from the left hand uh, side of the front cover to the right hand side, not to the bleed because I want this centered. And I'll type in a title. I'll just call it Bondi Lifeguards. Now it doesn't look very good at the moment because it's just black and it's small. So I'm going to click and highlight this then go up here to the left and this is going to change the size of the text. I'll change it to 72 points. Okay it's a little bit too big. I'll fix that hyphenation in a moment but I'm going to change the typeface. I don't think a serif typeface is very good for a, a title. Not for this particular book. I'm going to use a sans serif typeface called Calibri. It's very common. Uh, just so you don't think you need really fancy fonts all the time. I've just clicked to the left of the L and now I'm going to press the enter key. Or you do return on Mac. Oh okay it's disappeared. That's good because I'm going to show you a trick now. Uh, by clicking on the black arrow I'm going to increase the size of the text box and notice when I do this that the little red square to the bottom right with the cross in it is going to disappear. This indicates that there is more text in there that's not showing. Notice how the box disappeared. That's because we can see all the text. Okay, still more to do to this. I'm going to click back on the type tool so I can work directly on the text. Click and highlight it and I'm going to center this. 
That doesn't look too bad. But you know what I think might work really well is if we turn this text into small caps. They're different to all caps. I'm going to go up here to the type menu, click on that and go to character. And up in the top right hand corner of this character palette, not the cross, but there's a little arrowhead. If I click on that, you can see there's an option for small caps. Whoa, did you see what happened? Okay, so the B and the L at the start of each word, they remain at the large capital size, but the other letters go to what's called a small cap size. That doesn't look too bad, but I think they're actually, the two words are a little bit far apart. I'm going to click and highlight them, then go up to the left here, and this control here is called leading. It's written in the same way that leading is written, but it's leading, and it's to do with the spacing between lines, which comes from these strips of lead they used to put between the rows of type. I'm going to try 72 points down from 86.4. Yeah, that's a bit better. I think it works a little bit better. Uh, but I want to bring the whole text box down, so I'm going to click on the black arrow. And now by doing this repetitively, you can see, you can get an idea of how the black arrow, you've got to go between that and the type tool. That looks pretty good. Not happy with the colour though. I'll work on that in a minute. Uh, I'm going to put the author name down the bottom. I'm going to click back on the type tool. And then like I did at the top, I'm going to click and drag all the way across the front cover, not to the edge of the bleed, just to the edge of the page. And then I'm going to type in an author name. Let's say it's my name, just for the hell of it. And highlight it. Click and drag to highlight as you would in Word. Make this a bit bigger. I'm going up to the top left here. Let's make it 60 point. You can use more fine controls here. You can click up and click down. Uh, but that's just a bit of a shortcut there. I'm going to center it. And of course, I'm going to change the typeface to Calibri to be consistent with that above it. That's not a bad location for the author name, but I think it could go down a bit. So I'm going to click on the black arrow. And this time, instead of actually moving it down by dragging it, I'm going to actually click the arrows on my keyboard. And you can hear it clicking as I go down and very, very slightly each click, it moves down a little bit further. Okay, that's not a bad position. I'm going to click now back on the type tool because I'm going to add some colors. First of all, I'm going to add some color to the title, Bondi Life Guides. I might make that a yellow. There's a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to go to the toolbox and double click on this little T here, which is the fill. Quick double click brings up the color picker. And I want a yellow here. If you can't see it straight up, see this middle column. I'm going to click and drag these two little markers here, bring them up high until I can see the yellow. Then I'm going to click on the yellow itself, then click OK, then I'll unhighlight it. OK, now you can see the yellow applied and you can decide what you think of that. Still on the type tool, I'm going to now click on the author name and change that to white. I'm going to do this via a different method now. I'm going to Window, Color, and then I'm going to click on Swatches. It brings up a simplified selection of colors. And I'm going to click Paper. Make sure, by the way, that you are using the Fill tool, which is the very top left little square underneath the word stroke. Don't use stroke, which is uh, directly below right, because that is like the bordering of the letters, or if you're doing a box, it'll be the bordering of the box. But paper, when you click on it, you'll see it's white, because it's assuming that the paper underneath will be white. Uh, now that is pretty much the front cover done, and we're going to save it, of course, by going to File and Save, and now we're ready to do the back cover. Thank you for watching and please remember to comment, like or subscribe if you'd like to view more videos about indie book publishing.